Welcome. I'm Francesco Di Valmarana, a partner in Pantheon's European investment team. And today I'm joined by Nino Tronchetti Provera, founder and one of the leading partners of Ambienta, a private equity firm that's focused on sustainability. Founded 10 years ago, Ambienta has offices in Milan, Dusseldorf, and London and is the largest pool of capital dedicated to the area of sustainable development and resource efficiency. Interestingly, while many firms focus on specific sectors, Ambienta has decided to look at the theme of sustainability across European companies, and it defines this area as pollution control and resource efficiency. Nino, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Sustainability is quite a big topic. How do you as Ambienta think of it, and what are the areas in which you're focusing right now? Think about all the uncertainties that are, have been happening in the last few years, you know, from, uh, you know, uh, Lehman Brothers to the Greek crisis up to Brexit and Trump and stuff like that. So the only certainty is there is uncertainty. Mm. There are other certainties. Uh, population uh, has been uh, tripling in the last few years, uh, booming consumption of these new consumers. Uh, m that makes sustainable a long-term trend, one of the few things we can be sure about, because unfortunately, human beings are consuming too many natural resources and human beings are producing too much pollution. Yeah. Which means that you have a business that is able to produce the same output using less input, or is able to produce the same output polluting less, regardless of uh, uh, ethical, uh, clean, uh, green uh, incentives uh, uh, matters, it will be industrially more competitive and therefore it will grow and flourish in the marketplace. So it makes business sense. It is industrial. We are here to make money. We are not here to save the planet. So this is clearly a global phenomenon about which you're speaking. Uh, Ambienta as a European-based organization, how do you think about it? What are maybe some of the salient features that you're looking for? Um, Europe is by far the leading continent as far as sustainability is concerned, regardless of whatever KPI you look at. And there are very simple reasons for it. Europe doesn't have natural resources, and therefore we were forced to use them wisely, and therefore we are 52% more efficient than the US in using energy. We recycle three times the US. And as far as pollution is concerned, we, we build the industrial footprint for Europe within, uh, inside our, our cities. The Ruhr, the industrial era of Germany in the 80s, was as polluted as China is today. And we managed to reduce that pollution by 90% in the last 40 years. So Europe has been facing the issues before, has been not completely solving, but went very far in reducing those two issues, and today has all the resources and the, and the solutions to help the rest of the world uh, solving the same issues. And so Ambienta is an investment house. I mean, how do you find areas on which to focus, and then how do you tackle them? Listen, sustainability is not a sector, it's a theme. It's like quality. It affects every single industry out there. Uh, the, 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 big issue, the big opportunity is to take small, medium businesses global because they have the solution that everybody's waiting for out there. The problem is that these companies have been created by very brave entrepreneurs. That's the heart of, uh, the heart of European industrial footprint is small, medium businesses. Now, how do you take them global? They don't only, it's a problem, it, everybody talks about aging of those entrepreneurs. The real issue is about skills. So you have to put management, you have to put systems. S very often we do a lot of add-on in order to add scale. Uh, uh, you know, we sell in 130 countries around the planet, not us, our, our companies, and that means a lot of work. So it means really taking very good companies and uh, have to work inside to make them better to, to grow to the next phase, which is g going global. So if you have so much work to do to, to grow that company and make, make it successful, it's very important that you get into the right companies early on. How do you, as, as a group, figure out which companies to invest in? What are, you, what are you looking for? We have people looking at how sustainability is affecting the different sectors. We are actually trying to push the concept uh, into new areas. For instance, we are now looking a lot at B2C, which was something we didn't look before. Um, but you know, it's very hard for us to predict uh, which kind of sector because it's everywhere. I mean, 20% of pollution of water is due to textile. We haven't done any investment in textile, but there's a lot to do in textile. Look at food. Uh, 
57% of the resources that they put into the field to grow food is lost because they, don't, they cannot make it to our mouth. Uh, it's a big resource efficiency issue. Uh, it affects agriculture, so you solve it through precise agriculture, through better tractor, more efficient, that uh, reduces the consumption of fuel. So you reduce all the resources you put in the agriculture field. Then it's about processing food, uh, so everything that increases the yield of production of food affects that 57%. <coughs> up, up to the distribution, imagine that 95% of the fresh food that is consumed in the new economies is not handled to what we would consider a normal uh, food uh, cold, cold chain. Okay, refrigerator of meat and stuff like that. So there's a lot to do, which is not creating new technologies, it's actually uh, making them adopting what we have been using for 30, 40 years. Mm -hmm. Up to new trends, uh, which is more pollution related, if you may, which is organic food, which is one of the new and first area in which people are willing to pay a premium for environmental reason. Coupled, coupled with uh, consumer trends, uh, health, uh, wellness, and blah, blah. But uh, I never believed in people willing to pay a premium for green. Mm. In B2B, it, that's not even the case. But uh, it's, it's, it's getting, it's starting. Are there other sectors that you're focused on at the moment? Let me go back to the old economy industrial activity like chemicals. Um, chemicals are indeed big time polluting. Uh, but they are very important for us. Uh, without chemicals, our life would be much worse and much shorter. So the solution is not to abandon, not to, to ban chemicals, but is to make them more sustainable. And when I talk about sustainability, I don't only refer to the new renewable material, uh, you know, biodegradable, that they can, can be using chemicals, which is, yes, part of the sustainability journey, but I'm also referring to very basic stuff. How to make a coating less uh, solvent-based, how to make a glue less polluted, how to make uh, a factory, chemical factory less harmful to the suburban, et cetera, et cetera, um, which is uh, full of opportunity. Year by year, these companies will reduce the cost of what they're doing, which will increase their profit, but it will also reduce the impact of what they do because whenever they reduce chemicals, they reduce the cost of their product, but they also reduce the pollution effect of what they do. So. The, 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 the core goal here is to, is to show that by making more profit, uh, you are making more good impact uh, on, the, on the environment or you are you're reducing your impact uh, on, the, on, the, on the environment. By having sustainability as a th theme more than as a um, strategy for the fund, does that allow you to access transactions that you might not be able to as a plain mid-market fund? It takes uh, three hours to explain an investor what sustainability is. It actually takes a day to, to explain it to an advisor. It takes uh, 30 seconds to an entrepreneur. Because regardless of the industry you're in, sustainability is somehow affecting what you do. And therefore, you immediately see that angle. And that's clearly an advantage for us when we talk to entrepreneurs. It sounds like there are potentially areas in the larger service or logistics industry where this can also be applicable. Talking about a theme that is applicable to every single economic human being activity is hard to me to frame it, right? Now, we refer to sectors so far, uh, the food and the chemical industry. Now, let me refer to a, to, to a theme that is cross, which, is, which we refer to as the cooling economy, uh, cold chain in food. Um, uh, cooling of buildings, heating and cooling of buildings, therefore. Uh, cooling of IT infrastructure, which need to be cooled in order to work, you know, farm, IT farms. Now, here, uh, it's, a, it's a growing industry. It allows a lot of productivity gains. It allows a lot of energy efficiency, but it drives because it's booming all around the world. Think about the cooling of buildings uh, potentially in new economies, places like India or China. Uh, it's a massive increase in the energy consumption of this planet. On top of this, you might remember the CHC uh, issue many years ago. What are the refrigerants that are used in a different application? Uh, we mentioned food, IT, buildings. Uh, uh, that has a lot of impact on the, on, the, on the surface of this planet. So 
is another big concept that applies to a lot of different industries where there's a lot of innovation that is, drive, that is basically driven by pollution control and resource efficiency, again. Reduced energy consumption. And, uh, and pollution control. Every five, 10 years, uh, they discover that some of the refrigerants that have been fantastic until yesterday, they have some uh, bad effect, and so they want to change them. So there is continuous innovation with, with respect to that. And that innovation is, if you go to a trade fair of cooling technology for buildings, or cooling technology for, fr for the fresh food, it's an energy efficiency driven trade fair. That's it. How do you focus on the this time, and what are you looking for? I look for normal companies, wherever in Europe, that uh, are doing well, but can do, can do better, where the entrepreneur is looking for somebody that can help him to acquire one of his competitors in another European country or elsewhere, uh, to go global and therefore entry in not in a speculative but in a stable way other continents and uh, you know establish footprint somewhere else and especially to upgrade his management and systems uh, 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 footprint uh, and I focus a lot on the, on, the, on the management part of it and sometimes they lack the skills and the experience to do these things and they're looking for somebody if you're able to show them that you can help them with this and you couple this with the long-term sustainability trend, you can then have an equity story that allows you to create value inside the company and to create value by growing this company internationally. Well, you know, thank you very much for spending time with us. It's fascinating to hear someone apply the private equity skill set, if you will, to something that is so important and has so much potential. Thank you very much for having invited me.